that this may be an allergy. They are also elevated in a lot of other conditions like immunodeficiency can also have Ig that is elevated. So correlated with your clinical symptoms. Correlated with the clinical symptoms and see if it is fitting into IgE. When you do IgE, make sure that the child is not on steroids when you do it. Because if you do it while the child is on steroids, it will come low. So you will get a false negative IgE. So whenever you send IgE levels, you have to make sure that the child is on not on steroids. So before we label a child as asthma and start him on something which is going to be say two years, three years therapy, we have to rule out certain things. One thing that we have to do is a chest X-ray and a monitor. Why? Is it because TB comes with asthma? No. TB does not come with asthma. But because you are going to keep this child on steroids, you don't want him to be having an underlying TB because it will aggravate. So before we start any child on steroids, long term steroids, we should rule out tuberculosis. Extra paranasal sinuses, I told you, you have to rule out sinusitis before you start. And you should look for eosinophilia because sometimes tropical eosinophilia can come as easy episodes. And if we can treat that, then we don't need to give the whole uh, inhaler therapy. Now, treatment of asthma, we said there are two medications. There are controllers and there are relievers. Your controllers are your brown color medications, that is your steroids. Of your inhaled steroids, you have beclomethazine, Ridicinide, Floticazole. Remember these three. These are the most commonly used in our country. The other ones like Transcendolone, Nometazazone are not so commonly used. Oral steroids are not used in, as a controller. They are used only for a reliever of an acute episode. When you use this as a controller, that means this child has severe persistent asthma not responding to my inhaler therapy. Then I've gone on to an oral steroid. So you don't usually use oral steroids for long term control of asthma. The other is sodium bromoglycate. Not very useful, but it's still being tried. We don't really find it very useful in clinical practice. Long acting beta 2 agonist. We know that when we get beta agonist, there is always a chance that there may be tachyphylaxis. So we can't use our blue drugs such as astelin or salbutamol for a very long time. Because they will get tachyphylaxis, you need more and more dose to control the disease. However, you have these long-acting beta 2 agonists that can be used as a controller. They don't cause tachyphylaxis. So you can use them for a very long time. They are very useful because you can decrease the dose of your inhaled steroids. Only thing is you cannot use your beta agonists for children less than 5 years. So no parmeterol, no calmeterol for any child less than 5 years. It can be used only in children more than 5 years. And you can combine long-acting steroids. So if you use budexamide and you use parmeterol, combine it, you'll be able to bring down the dose of your inhaled steroids much less. You have leukotriene antagonist, that is your Monte Lucas. What is available in India is Monte Lucas. Now, when is this drug used? Either asthma not controlled, I have put him on maximum dose of inhaled steroids, I have put him on beta 2 agonist, still the symptoms are not getting controlled. Then I may try Monte Lucas. So, one is uncontrolled asthma not responding to the first two primary measures. Second is only exercise in your asthma. Child gets asthma only when he exercises, only when he is running. That's the time I will try Monte Lucas because it works best for exercise in this. It's not a drug of first choice for any other asthma. You may have lots of MRs coming to you, Monte Lucas, now in practice you use it as your first line, very good results, no. It's only for your exercise in your asthma and it is for your uh, asthma not controlled with any other drug. Now your relievers. Your relievers are your blue medications. Relievers are the ones for your acute symptoms. So relievers are the ones that you use beta agonists, albuterol, salbutamol, terbutal. Anticholinergics we can use. Sometimes, especially when a child comes in status asthmatic, and we have this child on uh, beta agonists, we give nebulization, we give three nebulizations not control. Then we continue nebulization too early. Now if we give too early nebulization, you can imagine the amount of side effects that are beta agonist is going to cause. The beta agonist is going to la uh, land up in tremors, hypokalemia. So you don't want those side effects. 
So you can use ipracropium bromide, anticholinergic. So it is again something which will decrease the dose of your beta agonist to prevent the side effects. So you can use anticholinergic, that is ipracropium bromide. Theophylline is not really used that much now because of the risk of arrhythmia. Lots of arrhythmias, lots of drug interactions that can occur. So you really don't use it until and unless the child is not responding to your nebulization, not responding to your IV steroids and you still have to use this. So this is not going to be your first choice of treating an acute asthma episode. Adrenal and epinephrine can be used interchangeably with your beta agonist. So if you are giving scalvitamol nebulization, you can give adrenal nebulization. Only problem with adrenaline is that rebound. If I use adrenaline for 5 days and I stop it suddenly, there will be a rebound. That's why I prefer a beta agonist as compared to an adrenaline nebulization. But some children would respond better to adrenaline nebulization, so you have to be the best judge for that. Now we come to the devices that are available. There are lots of devices that are available to give this kind of therapy. Why asthma is so peculiar? Because we've been able to give them drugs straight into the lungs. We don't need to give them oral syrups, tablets, causing systemic side effects. We can give them drugs which go straight into the lungs. Now when it goes straight into the lungs, side effects is less, much lesser. So we can use these drugs. Now there are various ways that you can give. Either you give it by an inhaled therapy or you give it by a rota cap. That's a capsule and you inhale the powder. Either you inhale the liquid or you inhale the powder. If you look at the inhaled therapy, you've got lots of them. You got uh, Acuhela, Aerohela, you got Autohela, Clickhela. These are the ones, what is the importance? It's the same mechanism as a MDI with a spacer, except that there's no coordination required. It's automatic. He just puts it into the mouth, the mouth is into the mouth, and takes a breath. The breath activates the device, it gives a click, the drug is released, and it goes into the system. So there's no coordination required at all. So that's your Autohela. Autohela is completely automatic. You just hold it into the mouth, take normal breathing, and it activates the drug. What we use you normally is a meter dose inhaler. That's your MDI. And we use rota inhaler. Now, rota inhalers are again preferred in children more than eight years of age because again little coordination is required. Less than eight years, we wouldn't be able to use a rota inhaler. So what we use is an MDI. All of y'all have seen an MDI. Yeah, and are you all using it? Yes? Uh, I've got a few devices here which I'll show you. Uh, this is what we have is a spacer. So this is uh, how you join the spacer. It's got a unique uh, aerodynamic structure. You put the inhaler here. You put the inhaler here and from here you're breathing. When you are breathing, either you can do two methods. One is you take multiple breaths, like this. You got that, you heard that sound that comes to this moment. Or you take a deep breath. Better is to, that coordination is a little difficult. So better is to take. Okay. Now what you do is, put this uh, spacer like this. Make sure it's locked properly. There is a locking system here. Make sure it's locked properly. Take an inhaler. Now this is just a demo inhaler. That's why it's green color. Otherwise usually brown. You take an inhaler. Make sure it's shaken well. Attach it here. Keep it in the mouth. And then press. Most of us make a mistake of pressing first and then putting in the mouth. Keep it in the mouth and then press. And then you have to take a breath for one whole minute. Parents have to give this for one whole minute. One whole minute. One whole minute you do this and then close the mouth. They are supposed to keep, close the mouth for two minutes. So that is the way that they are supposed to take the drug. After they have taken the drug, they are supposed to rinse the mouth. Why should they rinse the mouth? 
Because you got steroids in your mouth. This drug, 100% delivery is not there. 10% will stick into the spacer. Out of that 90%, quite a lot will, 20 to 25% will remain in your mouth. Remaining will go inside. So you need to give rinsing them out. In a young child, they will not rinse them out. Let them gargle and take it in. That's fine. That they can do. Now, another thing that you have to tell them, this, they should know when it's getting empty. Because even if it is empty, you keep on spraying. So they think that the drug is going. So you get usually 200 meter dose or you get 100 meter dose. Usually these are 200 meter dose. So they have to know when it is empty. One is they keep a calendar, approximate. If you are giving one BD, so one in the morning, one in the evening, so 60 in a month. If it's 200, it should last them around two and a half, three and a half months. That is one way of keeping a record. Second way is they remove this. They remove this. You can remove this, put it in water. If it floats in water, it is empty. If it sinks in water, it is filled. Okay, so that is another thing that they have to look at. So, one is keep a character and second is actually see whether the drug is there by floating it in water. How do we clean these devices? That is another thing that is very important. After they've given this, they have to remove it. So you remove it. You don't need to clean it every day. Once in 15 days is good enough. Liquid soap and water. Okay, no soap bar. Liquid soap and water. No cloth to be used, no brush to be used. Just liquid soap and water. Just apply it, clean it in running water again. And they have to let it drip dry. So no cloth to dry it. Let it drip dry. So after they wash it, just let them keep it like that till it dries up. Reason is, number of times that you wash and you clean, the surface becomes little rough. More the surface becomes rough, more the chances that the drug will remain in the spacer rather than going inside the mouth. So you need to clean it drip dry. This is known as drip dry. You are not cleaning it with a cloth. You are drip drying it. And this has to be done once in 15 days. Ideally, a spacer should be discarded every six months and a new one has to be bought. That is another problem that most of the uh, parents don't do. They don't discard the spacer. They just keep it and continue and continue. So every six months, ideally, they should change the spacer. Now, you have, this is one device, this huge spacer. You have something which you can take it with you. So you have a smaller one. This is the most ideal one. Suppose a child is on a spacer therapy that is PBS therapy. So sometimes he needs to take it in school. So you can have the smaller one. Again, same way. There is a lock system here. This end goes into the mouth. And this end is a drug. So it's something which is ideal to carry. Very easy. It's a different material as compared to this. It's a, a different material as compared to this. This material does not last very long. Okay, so that's the problem with this material.
tube, the color end has to go inside. So you put the color end into that hole here. There's a hole here, you put it inside, twist it, so the capsule breaks. Once the capsule breaks, take a deep breath. Deep breath like that. And again close your mouth for two minutes. With the deep breath, the entire powder should disappear. If the powder has remained inside, then second breath has to be taken. And then close your mouth. Now this has to remain inside. The second time that you use, open it, throw it out and use the second time. Put the second capsule inside. That's a rota cap and rota here. Advantage, cheaper. Cheaper as compared to an MDI. You don't have to remember when the drug is over. You can see from the capsule that the drug is over. So you don't have to remember or keep a chart or a calendar. Second, it's easier to carry. Such a small thing. Anyone can carry it into their pocket. So it's a very easy way of carrying. And the only problem is you need a little coordination. So that deep breath is what is required. In a spacer with an MDI, you didn't require anything. One way of taking drugs in adult is just to take straight away the inhaler. You don't need a spacer. But with this, there's a problem. You need a coordination. So when you press, you're supposed to take a deep breath at that time right away. Lots of adults are not able to do this.